NASA's Lunar Laser Communications Demonstration, LLCD, flown on the LADI spacecraft in 2013 to 2014, proved laser-based optical communications over 239,000 miles from lunar orbit to Earth, achieving a record 622 megabits per second downlink, six times faster than top radio systems, and 20 megabits per second uplink. It used a compact 0.5-watt laser through a 10-centimeter telescope, outperforming RF in size, weight, and power. Ground terminals in New Mexico, California, and Spain handled error-free data through clouds and sunlight, paving the way for future deep space laser networks. Blue Origins Mars Telecommunications Orbiter is a high-performance relay spacecraft built on the Blue Ring platform to provide continuous, high-bandwidth communications around Mars for NASA and future commercial missions. It combines steerable high-rate antennas, links to small relay sats in low Mars orbit, and a hybrid propulsion system using both solar electric and chemical engines to flexibly reach and maintain Mars orbit while carrying over a ton of payload. Designed for long-life service, it will support rovers, landers, and eventually human habitats with robust data, navigation, and edge computing in Martian space. Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost is a versatile lunar lander under NASA's CLPS program, designed for precise payload delivery to the moon's surface. Standing 2 meters tall with a 3.5 meter wide footprint, it carries up to 155 kilograms of science instruments, powered by solar panels generating 400 watts. Propulsion includes a Namo Liros main engine, 1,000 Newton thrust, eight Spectre RCS thrusters, and cold gas ACS for soft landings via carbon composite legs with crush cores. Blue Ghost Mission 1 successfully landed in Mare Crisium in 2025, operating 10 NASA payloads. NASA's vision for a habitable solar system Envision sustainable human presence across multiple worlds. Using in-situ resource utilization, advanced propulsion, and closed-loop life support. Key elements include lunar water, mining for propellant, Mars habitats with 3D printed regolith shielding, orbital stations for manufacturing, and nuclear power for reliable energy. Leveraging Artemis, Mars sample return, and commercial partnerships, the strategy aims for self-sustaining outposts by 2040, enabling science, resource extraction, and preparation for interstellar exploration. NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission, Lockheed Martin's groundbreaking first asteroid sample return effort, launched in 2016 to the near-Earth asteroid Bennu. After detailed orbital mapping in 2018, it executed a precise touch-and-go maneuver in 2020, collecting over 120 grams of pristine regolith using a nitrogen gas blast. The sample capsule parachuted safely to Utah in September 2023, where analysis revealed water, amino acids, and carbon compounds, essential building blocks of life. Renamed OSIRIS Apex, the spacecraft now heads to asteroid Apophis for a 2029 encounter. Lockheed Martin's Our Water Based Lunar Architecture lays out a blueprint for a permanent, sustainable human presence on the Moon. Built around one key resource water. Their concept is water-based, nuclear-enabled, commercially invested, using polar ice as drinking water, breathable oxygen, radiation shielding, and, crucially, 
rocket propellant, once split into hydrogen and oxygen. In this vision, fission reactors and solar arrays power habitats, Ayesru mining, and propellant depots at the South Pole, turning lunar water into the backbone of a cislunar economy and future Mars missions. NASA's Europa Clipper mission, launched October 14, 2024, explores Jupiter's icy moon, Europa, to assess its habitability. Orbiting Jupiter from April 2030, it will conduct 49 close flybys, some just 25 kilometers above the surface, using nine instruments, including ice-penetrating radar, cameras, spectrometers, and a magnetometer to map the ice shell, confirm the subsurface ocean, analyze surface chemistry, and detect potential plumes. Spanning 100 feet with solar arrays, it's shielded against Jupiter's intense radiation to study conditions for life. Polaris Dawn was SpaceX's groundbreaking private mission. Launched September 10th, 2024, funded by billionaire Jared Isaacman. The four-person crew, Isaacman, Scott Petit, Sarah Gillis, and Anna Menon, reached a record 1,400-kilometer altitude in Dragon Resilience, the highest crewed orbit since Apollo. They conducted the first commercial spacewalk using new EVA suits, tested Starlink laser communications, and ran 36-plus health experiments on radiation, motion sickness, and microgravity effects. The five-day flight advanced commercial deep space capabilities. NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter animations showcase the first powered flight on another planet, attached to Perseverance rover during Mars 2020. These visuals depict Ingenuity's deployment, 72 record-breaking flights covering 17 kilometers over three years, scouting terrain and autonomous navigation in thin atmosphere. From takeoff spins to high-altitude hovers, reaching 24 meters and speeds of 12 miles per hour. The animations highlight engineering triumphs before its January 2024. Rotor damage ended operations, paving way for future Mars rotorcraft. Europe's future space transport ecosystem is taking shape with a bold shift toward reusable rockets, flexible launchers, and advanced in-orbit services. This new system aims to cut costs, boost reliability, and give Europe a stronger position in the global space race. From next-generation vehicles like Ariane Next to small rapid response launchers, space tugs, and refueling stations, Europe is building a complete transport network designed for long-term missions around Earth, the Moon, and beyond. It's a major transformation that will define how Europe explores and operates in space for decades to come. NASA's Skyfall mission concept proposes deploying six autonomous helicopters directly onto Mars via a Skyfall maneuver, releasing them mid-descent from an entry capsule to eliminate costly landers. Building on Ingenuity's success, these scouts would map water ice, terrain, and resources across multiple human landing sites using high-res cameras and subsurface radar. Targeting a 2028 launch with AeroVironment and JPL, Skyfall multiplies exploration range and data at low cost, accelerating safe crewed missions. Rocket Lab's Neutron is a reusable medium-lift launch vehicle, standing 43 meters tall with a 7-meter diameter, designed for Constellation deployments, deep space, and human spaceflight. Powered by nine Archimedes LOX and methane engines on the first stage, 1.485 million LLBF liftoff thrust, and one vacuum optimized on the second, 
It lifts 13,000 kilograms to LEO reusable or 15,000 kilograms expendable. Features include carbon composite tanks, return to launch site landings, and a captive fairing for rapid reuse. First launch targeted for mid-2026 from Wallops Island. Atmos Space Cargo's Phoenix capsule is a revolutionary re-entry vehicle featuring an innovative inflatable heat shield that deploys to 6 meters diameter for gentle atmospheric braking without parachutes or ablative materials. The 250-kilogram prototype, compatible with rideshare launches like SpaceX Transporter, carries up to 100-kilogram payloads with a class-leading 1 to 2 efficiency ratio. Phoenix One tested orbit data collection and shield deployment in 2025. Phoenix Two adds propulsion and solar power for months-long missions, targeting biotech, manufacturing returns by 2026. NASA's Mars Sample Return Mission plans to bring back rock and soil samples collected by the Perseverance rover from Jezero Crater where it has cached over 20 tubes, potentially holding signs of ancient microbial life. The strategy involves a sample retrieval lander, deploying the Mars Ascent Vehicle and helicopters to grab the samples. With ESA's Earth Return Orbiter capturing them in Mars orbit for the trip home. Facing $11 billion, costs and delays past 2040, NASA is redesigning with sky cranes or commercial landers for a 2035 to 2039 return amid budget threats. MIT's Space Architecture Research designed sustainable habitats for Mars and beyond, combining engineering, materials, science, and human factors. Modular, Robot-deployable structures scale from single pods to colonies, using 3D-printed regolith shelters and water ice extraction for life support. Rotating stations provide artificial gravity to prevent muscle atrophy, while radiation shielding leverages lunar soil. These innovations support NASA's Artemis program and private ventures like Vast's Haven One, focusing on long-term human well-being and self-sufficiency in space. NASA's Artemis II mission will send four astronauts, Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, Christina Koch, and CSA's Jeremy Hansen around the moon in a 10-day free return trajectory, testing the SLS rocket, Orion spacecraft, and ground systems for the first time with crew. Launch is targeted no earlier than February 5th, 2026, from Kennedy Space Center's LC-39B, with stacking completed in October 2025, after heat shield and life support fixes. The crew will perform a lunar flyby at 80 kilometers altitude, test skip re-entry for Pacific Splashdown, validating deep space capabilities for Artemis III landings. Inversions Arc is the world's first space-based delivery vehicle, enabling cargo drops anywhere on Earth in under 60 minutes. The 8-foot by 4-foot lifting body spacecraft launches via rideshare rockets, deploys autonomously from orbit, maneuvers hypersonically at Mach 20+, and lands precisely 50-foot accuracy on water, snow, or land using steerable parachutes no runways required. Carrying up to 500 pounds for months in orbit, it's ideal for military logistics, disaster relief, and hypersonic testing, with first flights planned for 2026. VAST is a private space company building next-generation commercial space stations, with Haven One as its first orbital outpost planned for launch in 2026. The introducing VAST, the next giant leap, concept is that instead of short visits, 
humans will live and work long-term in space, in modular stations that succeed the ISS. Haven 1 is designed for four-person crews, doing science, in-space manufacturing, and commercial missions. And it paves the way for the larger Haven 2 complex aimed at artificial gravity and permanent habitation. 